Lee, Buchanan, Butler, Calderon, Campos, Carter, Cedillo, Chesbro, Conway, Cook, Davis, Dickinson, Donnelly, Ing, Fior, Fletcher, Fong, Fuentes, Furatani, Gaines, Galgiani, Garrick, Gatto, Gordon, Gorell, Grove, Hagman, Halderman, Hall, Harkey, Hayashi, Hernandez, Hill, Huber, Weso, Huffman, Jeffries, Jones, Knight, Lara, Logue, Lowenthal, Ma, Mansour, Mendoza, Miller, Mitchell, Monning, Morell, Nestande, Nielsen, Norby, Olson, Pan, Perea, V. Manuel Perez, Portentino, Silva, Skinner, Smythe, Solorio, Swanson, Torres, Valadeo, Wagner, Wykowski, Williams, Yamada, Mr. Speaker.
A quorum is present. Members, we ask our guests and visitors in the rear of the chamber and in the gallery to please stand for the prayer. We ask Assemblymember Gatto to offer the day's prayer. Father in heaven, as we begin this week, we place ourselves in your hands. Whatever may come our way during the course of these days, let it be the result of diligent work, serious concern, and abiding charity. Then, be it painful or be it joyful, it will be your will. And consequently, it will, be, it will bring us peace and harmony. Amen. We ask our guests and visitors to remain standing and join us for the pledge. Please join Assemblymember Huber as she leads us in the pledge. Ms. Huber. Please join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. You may be seated. Reading of the previous day's journal. Assembly Chamber of Sacramento, Thursday, August 18, 2011. Assembly Amendment at 9 a.m. Honorable Fiona Omar, Speaker for the Chamber of Assembly, Presiding Chief Clary Dawson Wilson at the desk, reading Clary Timothy Moreland reading. The roll was called. Ashaw Genalejo, Allen, Amiano, Atkins, Bell, Berry Hill, Block, Bradford, Brownley, Buchanan, Butler, Calderon, Compost, Carter, Cedillo, Chesbro, Conway, Cook, Davis, Dickinson, Donnelly, Ying, Fuhr, Fletcher, Fong, Fuentes, Furtani, Gaines, Gaggiani, Garrett, Gatto, Gordon Grove, Hagman, Halderman, Hall, Harkey, Hayashi, Hernandez, Hill, Huber, Waiso, Huffman, Jeffries, Jones, Knight, Lara, Logue, Lowenthal, Ma, Mansour, Mendoza, Miller, Mitchell, Monning, Morell, Nestande, Nielsen, Norby, Olson, Pan, Perea, V. Manuel, Perez, Portentino, Silva, Skinner, Smite, Solorio, Swanson, Torres, Valadeo, Wagner, Wykowski, Williams, Yamada, Mr. Speaker. Upon invitation is Mr. Project. Allen moves and Mr. Hagman seconds that the reading of the previous day's journal be dispensed with. Presentations of petitions, there are none. Introduction and reference of bills will be deferred. Reports of committees will be deemed read and amendments deemed adopted. Messages from the governor, there are none. Messages from the Senate, there are none. Motions and resolutions. The absences for the day will be deemed read and printed in the journal. Mr. Calderon. Yes, uh, Madam Speaker, I request unanimous consent to suspend Assembly Rule 45.5 to allow Assembly Member Amiano, Lowenthal, Portentino, and Torres to have guests. Without objection. Let me hold off on that one. I'll come back to that one. Okay. Request unanimous consent to suspend Assembly Rule 45.5 to allow Assembly Member Hill, Perea, Skinner, Torres, and Williams to speak on adjourn in memory. Without objection. Now you have some concurrences that you're going to do and some amendments. So I'll move on until you make those motions. Um, request unanimous consent pursuant to Rule 77.2 to uh, return the following bills to the Senate for further action, file item 121 and file item 126. Without objection, clerk will note. Also pursuant to Assembly Rule 78 and at the request of the author, please send uh, the following bills to the inactive file, and that's file item 145. SB 931 by Vargas, without objection, clerk will note. And then pursuant to Rule 78, and at the request of the authors, I'm giving a one-day notice of intent to remove the following bills from the inactive file. File item A3, uh, SB 192. File item A4, SB 193. Without objection, clerk will note. And at the request of the author, Please remove the following bills from the consent calendar. File item 19, SB. Okay, Mr. Calderon, we'll do this after second reading. Oh, okay. That's after second reading?
Okay, uh, re pursuant to Rule 62A, request unanimous consent to suspend joint rule, uh, that rule, Joint 62A, the file notice requirement to allow Health Committee to hear SB 335 by Mr. Hernandez on Tuesday, August 23rd at 1.30 p.m. in Room 437, and to hear SB 335 by Hernandez, same bill, on Thursday, August 25th upon the call of the Chair pending re-referral from the Health Committee. All right. Without objection. Okay, members, we have some guests here today. Ms. Lowenthal, are your guests here today? Okay, Ms. Lowenthal. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. Today I'm pleased to present this resolution to Mr. Dan Pressburg and Mr. Jack Smith, two very good friends of mine and friends of Long Beach. They represent Better Balance for Long Beach. Better Balance was the winner of this year's Neighborhood of the Year Grand Prize at the 2011 Neighborhoods USA Conference in Anchorage, Alaska. Better Balance for Long Beach received this award for their one-day Christmas store. It's called Shopping with Dignity. It offers needy local families the opportunity to pick out holiday gifts for family members that they otherwise would not be able to afford. Thank you, Madam Speaker. BBLB's One Day Christmas Store is a project involving three partners. Long Beach's First Lady, Nancy Foster, the First Congregational Church, and the Long Beach Rescue Mission. Neighborhoods USA is a national nonprofit organization committed to building and strengthening neighborhood organizations. This is actually the second time that Long Beach has brought home the Neighborhood of the Year Award. And I just want to tell you there was nothing as wonderful as seeing the kids uh, who expected to come for something for themselves also having an opportunity to give gifts to members of their family that without this organization, they would not have been able to do. So please join me in congratulating these gentlemen and everyone that is in Better Balance for Long Beach for their efforts. Thank you. Mr. Calderon. Yes, Madam Speaker, request unanimous consent to suspend Assembly Rule 45.5 to allow Assemblymember Amiano, Lowenthal, Portentino, and Torres to have guests and photographers on the floor. Without objection. Okay, members, I have a quick announcement. The internet access is down right now. So please have some patience while we welcome some more guests. Mr. V. Manuel Perez. Thank you, uh, Madam Speaker and members. Good afternoon. I'm pleased to introduce to all of you Mr. Nathan Little, who has been serving as an intern with the Committee on Jobs, Economic Development, and the Economy. I want to thank Nathan for his hard work this summer during his internship with us. Uh, Nathan has researched and assisted the drafting of a report on innovation in the California economy and helped update information on the California economy and California's global markets. In particular, I want to commend him for his research into the changing face of rural California communities and his work to draft a new definition of rural based on medical service zones. Nathan will be leaving us soon to return to the University of Puget Sound in Washington State, and we are very sorry to see him leave. Thank you once again, Nathan, and I wish you the very best in your success.
Okay, business on the daily file, second reading, clerk will read. Senate Bill 923, 56, 152, 170, 183, 199, 202, 205, 217, 244, 263, 296, 356, 486, 442, 459, 6, 20, 32, 53, 100, 127, 131, 194, 233, 309, 368, 376, 398, 505, 541, 484, 488, 489, 502, 507, 513, 536, 549, 586, 672, 642, 646, 671, 676, 744, 746, 6, 578, 590, 599, 617, 619, 621, 650, 658, 707, 712, 718, 792, 818, 821, 752, 760, 773, 826, 850, 857, 836, 863, 869, 870, 879, 941, 942, 943, 944, 946, 947, 948, 757 with amendments, 16 with amendments, 334 with amendments, 737 with amendments, 225 with amendments, 267 with amendments, 306 with amendments, 647 with amendments, 769 with amendments, 813 with amendments, and Senate Bill 136 with amendments. All bills will be read and amendments deemed adopted. Mr. Calderon. Yes, Madam Speaker, at the request of the authors, please remove the following bills from consent calendar. File <laughs> File item 19, SB 20, file item 26, SB 233, file item 27, SB 309, file item 52, SB 617, and file item 58, SB 712. Without objection, clerk will note. Also, uh, from uh, at the request of the author, please remove file item 70, SB 863, by Mr. Liu, from the consent calendar and place the bill on the inactive file. Without objection, clerk will note. Okay, members, we are going to Senate third reading. We're going to take one bill out of order. File item 140, ACR 68. I'm sorry, it's assembly third reading. File item 140, ACR 68. Clerk will read. Assembly concurrent resolution 68 by Assembly Member Portentino and others relative to the Italian American Legislator Project. Mr. Portentino. Thank you, Madam Speaker and members. It is indeed an honor to be presenting ACR 68 on Italian American Heritage and the Italian American Legacy Project. Um, ACR uh, 68 not only continues the designation as of October as an Italian American Heritage Month, but introduces the Italian American Legislator Project, a legacy of service to the California legislature. This project, um, will, which we call the Legacy Project, is about compiling a list of every Italian American who has proudly served as a member of the California State Legislature. At the onset, we thought the list was already complete, compiled, and we would just be placing those names in a resolution. We soon learned that no such list existed. An important journey in California's history and an aspect of the California legislature's history was not documented. Members, can we have a little bit of attention? We have some important guests here also with us, former legislators. Thank you. Thank you. An important journey in California's history and an aspect of the California's legislature, legislature's history was not documented or completed until this point. We received a lot of help for this project, which we still consider incomplete. Among the co those contributing are the California Research Bureau, the California Italian American Task Force, former and current members of the legislature, staff, the chief clerk's office, historians, the Italian American Museum of Los Angeles, and many, many, many individuals and staff worked hard to put this project together. We confirmed heritage through a variety of means, including self-affirmation, family survivors, websites, oral histories, and news articles. In addition, the Italian American Museum of Los Angeles, former president pro tem, uh, David Roberti, 
and historian Lawrence de Stasi helped provide the verification needed to confirm the heritage of some of the individuals on this list. By no means is this project over. The list of assembly members and senators in this bill should be considered tentative, an ongoing project where we believe there may be more legislators to be found, specifically persons who have passed away. For this reason, the project will be maintained and updated. To us, this project represents an important part of California's history. The journey of Italian Americans in California is alive through this project. The contributions have been ongoing since California was first settled. We see a pattern of representation in areas where a large number of Italians settled in California during and after the gold rush. We see an absence of Italian American legislators during World War II. We see how many names were altered or changed, voluntarily or involuntarily. And we see the determination of a people to survive and make a better life for their children in a new country. We who serve in the legislature today do so because of this spirit and heart. Before I close, I should mention that while this project is about Italian-American legislators, our very own Chief Sergeant-at-Arms, Ron Payne, is also a proud Italian-American, and he does us honor as well. With that, I urge an I vote. We'll open the first roll call, uh, but we have others who want to speak, so I'll close in a moment. Thank you very much for allowing me to present this resolution, which I think does honor to Italian-Americans. Mr. Swanson. Uh, Madam Speaker, I just rise uh, briefly to compliment Mr. Portentino for his leadership uh, on this issue and this resolution ACR 68, uh, and to say that California's richness, its diversity is enhanced by efforts like this and leadership projects. And so I urge my colleagues to support this fine resolution uh, and the work uh, that Mr. Portentino uh, has so proudly led. Mr. Amiano. Thank you. Buongiorno, amici. We are a diverse group who only occasionally come together to represent our common culture. I'm talking about Italian Americans now. In 1990, we supported a resolution and sponsored an exhibit about the World War II internment of Italian Americans in California. Later, we authored a resolution that created the Italian American Task Force, which is still in existence today and has regularly authored bills and resolutions urging inclusion of Italian Americans in K-12 curriculum. For each of the past four years, we have jointly authored annual resolution designated October Italian American Heritage Month and sponsored capital exhibits covering 180 years of our history in this state. But our diversity is more interesting. Italian Americans have never organized as one political spectrum with complex views on cultural and economic issues that make us difficult to classify in a partisan sense. We are almost evenly divided in our political identity. About 35% of Italian Americans identify themselves as Republican, 32% as Democrats, and the remaining 33% identify as members of my family or independent. It is also interesting to note that all of the 51 legacy legislators listed in this resolution only five women and only one openly gay member. Can you guess who that is? Those numbers will surely increase as others come after us to serve our state's legislature. Regionally, there are interesting differences. Italians from the eastern part of the country experience discrimination and open hostility until about the 60s and 70s. Those in the West, especially California, faced less hostility as they entered the state when it was young. The dark period for Italian Americans in California occurred during World War II when thousands were forced to leave their homes and were prohibited from living in coastal areas. These regional differences contribute to our diverse views, how we see ourselves and how we relate to each other. The Legacy Project reminds us that we are here on the backs of those who came before us. I urge you uh, to support this first ever listing of our legacy in California State Capitol and ask for your I vert, a vote. And uh, surreptitiously, Ms. Speaker and members, I'd like to welcome to the floor New York State Senator Diane Savino. Senator Savino has dedicated much of her lives working for working families. Among her, her many accomplishments, Senator Savino has championed legislation to provide paid family leave and authored the first landmark domestic workers' bill of rights, exp expanding basic worker protection rights to domestic workers. Of course, in light of today's celebration, please join me in welcoming a fellow Italian-American, New York State Senator Diane Savino. 
them by. Mr. Norby. Madam Speaker, the Norwegian caucus wishes to recognize Italian Americans and all of their accomplishments, and also to commend this coming month, October, which is recognized as Italian American Heritage Month because of the exploits of the intrepid explorer Christopher Columbus, who landed the Bahamas in 1492, 500 years after Norwegian Leif Erikson also landed on this continent. Ms. Galgiani. I rise in support of ACR 68. A lot of work has been in, put into today's events. It was no small task to develop the list of 51 Italians and Italian Americans who have served in the California legislature and create an exhibit in our honor. These individuals spent many hours and weekends poring over documents, searching websites, making calls, and finding documents to substantiate the listing of members in this resolution. Our staff, sponsor, and Capitol Museum people met weekly for the past two months to ensure today's events run as smoothly as possible. So I want to take a moment to thank them. They are Maeve Roche, Renato Consolini, Ty Smith, all from the State Capitol Museum, Debbie Hollingsworth from the State Capitol Museum, Mariana Gatto from the Italian American Museum of Los Angeles, Lawrence DeStasi, author of Una Stori Storia Segreta, Former President Pro Tem David Roberti, who is a member of the California Italian American Task Force. Former Assembly Member Marilyn Brewer. Bill Cerruti from the California Italian American Task Force. Dotson Wilson, our Chief Clerk. Jennifer Teasdale from Senator Doug LaMalfa's office. Chris Ordeal and McKinley Morley, both from Senator Anthony Canella's office. Erasmo Viveros from my office. Lourdes Machado from Assembly Member Amiano's office and Deanna Hansen, Michelle Morris, and Diane Shelton from Assemblymember Portentino's office, as well as Alex Vassar from Join California. I urge an I vote on this resolution. Thank you. Okay, thank you, members. Uh, Mr. Portentino, you may close. Thank you, um, Madam Speaker and members. I would like to point out that we have been joined by uh, several um, very, very important members of the Italian Legacy Project and former uh, members of both the Assembly and the Senate. We actually have the oldest living Assembly member who happens to be a proud Italian American, Larry Cimboli, is here with us today. So if we could give a nice round of applause to Mr. Cimboli. <laughs> Mr. Cimboli served as mayor of Palmdale prior to his election in the State Assembly, and today is Palmdale's 49th birthday, and he was one of the proud founders of the city of Palmdale and served in the Assembly from 74 until 1980. Thank you, Larry, for being here. We have Sal Canella. Let's give a rousing round of applause to Sal Canella, who was elected to the State Assembly in 1990 and served until 1996 as a Democrat representing Merced in Stanislaus County. His son, Anthony Canellis, currently serves as a California State Senator from the Central Valley. We have Roger Nilo, our former colleague who was elected to the California State Assembly in 2004 and served until 2010 as a Republican representing Sacramento County. He is a certified public accountant and local business owner, and he is a good friend to all of us. And joining us at the unveiling of the exhibit at 1.30 will be David Roberti. Uh, Mr. Roberti was elected to the California State Assembly in 1966 and served until 71 when he was elected to the Senate, where he served until 1995 representing Los Angeles. Uh, he was the first Italian-American to serve as president pro tem of the Senate, and Mr. Roberti is one of five legislators who sponsored res resolutions establishing the California American Task Force. And so we want to do these gentlemen honors and give them another big rousing round of applause. Thank you very much for being here. So I respectfully ask for your support on this resolution, and I would respectfully ask for the first roll call to be open for co-authors. Okay, Mr. Portantino is requesting that the first roll be open for co-authors. This is for co-authors, members. Clerk will open the roll. All members vote who desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. This is for co-authors. OK, 
Okay, clerk will close the roll and tally the votes. For the record, there are 67 co-authors. We can take a voice vote on this item. All those in favor say aye. All those opposed say nay. The ayes have it. The measure is adopted. Okay, pursuant to Assembly Rule 77.2, I am re-referring the following bills to committee. File item 120 AB 1143 Dickinson to the Local Government Committee and file item 123 AB 1298 Blumenfield to the Transportation Committee. Okay, so we are going to start at the top of the concurrence item. Concurrence file. Okay, Mr. Portentino is requesting immediate transmittal to the, to the Senate. Senate. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Ms. Torres, her guest is here. So before we begin the concurrence file, Ms. Torres. Thank you, Madam Speaker and members from the European country of Italy to um, Middle America. It is my pleasure to introduce the members of Hondureños Unidos en Los Angeles, also known as ULA, a nonprofit organization in Los Angeles. Joining the members of ULA is Hector Francisco Monroy, the Honduras Consul General in San Francisco. Established in 1998, ULA works to advance the rights of Honduran and Central American immigrants in Los Angeles. They also perform a lot of humanitarian work to assist people in need in Honduras and Central America. For example, in 1998, Hurricane Mitch caused much devastation in Honduras and the rest of Central America. ULA, along with other Central American organizations, work to provide food, clothing, and other relief. Please join me in recognizing the members of ULA for their distinguished record of public service and contributions to the advancement of the Honduran American community. Okay, as soon as Ms. Torres finishes her photos, it's Torres, Blumenfield, Lowenthal, Williams, and Huffman. Okay, we are going to pass temporarily file item 92. File item 93, pass and retain. File item 94. Clerk will read. Assembly Bill 818 by Assemblymember Blumenfield and others, an act relating to recycling. Mr. Blumenfield. Thank you, Madam Chair, members. Uh, this bill, AB 818, retain, pertains to recycling. Less than 40% of the 7 million apartment dwellers in California can recycle have the opportunity to do that now. In contrast, over 70% of the people who live in homes are able to do that. What this bill does is it affords the renters the right to recycle so they can actually be able to recycle their, their materials. This bill has been the product, there's been bills like this for years that have, been, that have worked their way through the process. This is a little different in that I, I went out, I met with the apartment association, with the various folks who had issues with the bill from the beginning, and we worked on a very good compromise, a bill that's strong, but it allows off-ramps for apartment owners who may have either a financial hardship or uh, 
who don't have the bin space, the, the two critical areas that they were concerned with. It's a bill that I'm supporting. There's also there's questions that some people have about the interrelationship with uh, Mr. Chesborough's bill. I'm a co-author of his bill. He's a co-author of my bill. We're both uh, good with, with both bills. I ask uh, in the name of promoting recycling to, for your support for this common sense measure, and I ask for your I vote. Mr. Chesbro. I rise in support of Mr. Bloomfield's bill. And uh, I have my bill uh, sets a goal of moving the state from its 50% recycling goal to 75%. Uh, we should be progressing beyond our already terrific achievement, and multi uh, residential uh, recycling is an essential element in uh, keeping California in leadership globally in our, our uh, reduction of the waste stream. So uh, I, I'm happy to uh, ask for your I vote. Mr. Logue. Question to uh, question the author. Without objection? Yeah, my concern here is, is if the landlord provides all the requirements and the mandate and the tenants refuse to obey the mandate, who's fined and who's at risk? Um, you mean saying if people just simply don't recycle? Yes. Uh, this, this bill does there's not a fine for this basically says the the uh, apartment owners shall provide the ability to recycle you can't force somebody in a, in a unit to separate their trash it's not it doesn't require that there's not a fine if you don't do that it merely says it apartment owners if they can and again we, we put up very reasonable off ramps uh, they should they should do so uh, also thank you my, my concern is that the word mandate number one and also when it comes to apartment owners that if the tenant doesn't pay for their garbage that the that the landlord is required to pay for it so my concern here is is this is a step towards landlords being responsible for the behavior of their tenants in this capacity that's where i'm going to have some concern and you you don't think that's a problem the, the, you're not responsible for the behavior of your tenants in any way under this bill you, you merely are, are providing the blue bin just like you do in your home, just like if my kids don't put the uh, can in the, you know, it's up to me as the parent to maybe discipline them, but, but uh, the, the government's not going to come in and find me if my, if my kids don't recycle. Okay. The same thing with an apartment owner and, and their tenants, not to make those relationships parallel because they're not, mm -hmm. but uh, it doesn't set up liabilities in that regard. Do you uh, anticipate increased cost to the landlord if this bill is passed? Actually, I, I, incre I anticipate decreased cost to the landlord. Most folks who've went ahead and, and have, have tried this have found by diverting some of their waste, uh, they're actually able to save quite a lot of money. Uh, and so that's, that's a very positive aspect of this. We do have the economic hardship, again, worked out very closely with the Apartment Association so that if, if it turns out that to put this in will cause an economic hardship, they are uh, given an off-ramp. And that's why uh, this bill is, uh, you know, does not have opposition. Does it, so the apartment association is in, in support of this bill? There is no opposition. They're not formally taking a position okay. at, I Thank you. at this point. Thank you. Seeing no further questions or debate, Mr. Blumenfield, you may close. Respectfully ask for your I vote. Clerk will open the roll. All members vote who desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. Clerk will close the roll, tally the votes. Ayes 42, noes 24. Senate amendments are concurred in. File item 95, pass and retain. File item 96, AB 433, Clerk will read. Assembly Bill 433 by Assembly Member Bonnie Lowenthal, an act relating to vital records. Ms. Lowenthal. Thank you, Madam Speaker. AB 433 brings the state's vital statistics laws in line with federal standards by streamlining the existing process, making it easier to obtain an updated birth certificate. The Senate amendments were minor and technical, and the bill has no opposition. I ask for your I vote. Seeing no further questions or debate, clerk will open the roll. All members vote who desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. Clerk will close the roll, tally the votes. Ayes 43, no 24. Senate amendments are concurred in. File item 97, AB 504. Clerk will read. Assembly Bill 504 by Assembly Member Williams, an act relating to taxation. Mr. Williams. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Members, I rise uh, to present AB 504, which clarifies that Santa Barbara school districts, if they unify, can keep and maintain existing parcel tax revenues. Without clarifying legislation, unification of their districts 
would result in the nullification of locally approved parcel taxes and the frustration of the will of the vast majority of the voters. The bill would further allow the Unified School District to levy future parcel taxes with the same boundaries that they do now. AB 504 is sponsored by Santa Barbara School Districts. There is no opposition, and there has not been a no vote on this measure in either House. I ask for your I vote in concurrence and Senate amendments. Seeing no further questions or debate, clerk will open the roll. All members vote who desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. Clerk will close the roll, tally the votes. I 66, no zero. Senate amendments are concurred in. File items 98 through 103, pass and retain. File item 104, AB 1103, clerk will read. Assembly Bill 1103 by Assemblymember Huffman, an act relating to land use. Mr. Huffman. Thank you, Madam Speaker. This bill takes a small but important step toward providing flexibility in housing element law by allowing local governments to count toward their uh, housing targets uh, foreclosed properties that are converted to affordable housing and include long-term affordability covenants. It does a little bit less than it did a few months ago when this House approved it on a strong bipartisan basis, but it's still a very important bill, and I respectfully request your I vote. Seeing no further questions or debate, clerk will open the roll. All members vote who desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. Clerk will close the roll, tally the votes. I-63, no, zero. Senate amendments are concurred in. File item 105, pass and retain. File item 106, AB 75, clerk will read. Assembly Bill 75 by Assembly Member Hill, an act related to documents. Ms. Hill, Mr. Hill. Thank you, Madam Speaker and members. I rise today to ask for concurrence on Senate amendments for AB 775. This bill will protect consumers by closing significant loopholes with respect to notary services and misleading solicitations which allow for abuse and fraud. Amendments taken in the Senate are technical and simply make the fonts, font size used for the disclosure consistent with other disclosure requirements found in the Business and Professions Codes. I respectfully ask for your I vote on concurrence. Seeing no further questions or debate, clerk will open the roll. All members vote who desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. Clerk will close the roll, tally the votes. Ayes 47, noes 15. Senate amendments are concurred in. File item 107, AB 139. Clerk will read. Assembly Bill 139 by Assembly Member Fuentes and actually in the state claims to make an appropriation therefore and declare an urgency there to take effect immediately. Mr. Fuentes. Assembly Bill 1216 gives affected tenants and cities standing to enforce affordable housing retention statutes. Amendments taken in the Senate were technical and suggested by the Senate Transportation and Housing Committee. This bill is supported by the California Rural Legal Assistance Foundation, the Western Center on Law and Poverty, and the City of Santa Monica. There is no known opposition. I respectfully ask for an aye vote on concurrence. Seeing no further questions or debate, clerk will open the roll. All members vote who desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. Clerk will close the roll, tally the votes. I 67, no zero. Senate amendments are concurred in. File item 108, AB 151. Clerk will read. Assembly Bill 151 by Assembly Member Monning and Act relating to health care coverage. Mr. Monning. Thank you, Madam Speaker and members. Uh, present AB 151 with Senate amendments which limit the circumstances under which a Medicare Advantage enrollee can switch to a Medicare supplement plan by a different issuer. Uh, these amendments have removed all opposition from the file. I ask for your concurrence in the Senate amendments. Thank you. Seeing no further questions or debate, clerk will open the roll. All members vote who desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. Clerk will close the roll, tally the votes. Ayes 43, noes 19. Senate amendments are concurred in. File item 109, AB 195, clerk will read. Assembly Bill 195 by Assembly Member Roger Hernandez and others, an act relating to local public employee organizations. Mr. Hernandez. Madam Chair and members, I present to you AB 195 for concurrence. This bill addresses a gap in labor protections that currently exist in the myers Melias brown Act and the Educational Employment Relations Act. AB 195 has been amended in the Senate to mirror Educational Employment Relations Act's provisions relative to employment applicants and the prohibition 
on the disclosure of inaccurate financial information. The new amendments to AB 195 have addressed the opposition's concerns, and since then, they have moved their opposition to a neutral. Members, I ask for your aye vote. Seeing no further questions or debate, clerk will open the roll. All members vote who desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. The clerk will close the roll, tally the votes, ayes 43, noes 22, Senate amendments are concurred in. File item 110, pass and retain. File item 111, AB 240, clerk will read. Assembly Bill 240 by Assembly Member Bonilla, next relating to employment. Ms. Bonilla. Thank you, Madam Speaker and members. AB 240 provides equity for minimum wage workers that have been victims of wage violations by their employers. Under current law, a wronged worker may file a lawsuit in court and receive liquidated damages, the full amount of wages unlawfully paid, and interest as part of an award. A, a worker may also pursue a complaint through an administrative process, but the law is not clear whether liquidated damages may be included. AB 240 ensures that low-wage workers have the same monetary relief whether they pursue their claims administratively or by way of the courts. Amendments were taken in the Senate. Uh, they were technical in nature to address chaptering out issues. I respectfully ask for your aye vote. Seeing no further questions or debate, clerk will open the roll. All members vote who desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. Clerk will close the roll, tally the votes. Eyes 44, noes 22, Senate amendments are concurred in. File item 112, AB 337, clerk will read. Assembly Bill 337 by Assembly Member Monning and Act relating to ocean resources. Mr. Calderon. Well, if I could be recognized after this bill. Okay. Mr. Monning, concur, concur on both sides. Mr. Monning. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Members, Senate amendments taken to AB 337 clarify that the Sustainable Seafood Promotion Program is voluntary and is not a regulatory program that is subject to the Administrative Procedures Act. I ask for your aye vote. Seeing no further questions or debate, clerk will open the roll. All members vote who desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. Clerk will close the roll, tally the votes, I 65, noes 3, Senate amendments are concurred in. Mr. Calderon. Yes, Madam Speaker, I request unanimous consent to rescind the vote, whereby file item 107, AB 139 uh, was passed by this House. Without objection. File item 107, AB 139, clerk will read. Assembly Bill 139 by Assembly Member Fuentes and Actor Lane to seek claims to make an appropriation therefore and declare an emergency thereof take effect immediately. Mr. Fuentes. This bill, one of two annual bills sponsored by the California Victim Compensation and Government Claims Board, appropriates $3,172,327 to pay 118 claims against the state as approved by the board. 111 of these claims are for stale dated warrants. The Senate amendments add $3,009,631 for an additional 73 claims approved by the board. As passed by the Assembly, this bill appropriated $246,696 from the general fund to the board to cover 45 claims approved by the board. This bill, supported by the board, the Department of Finance, and the administration, has no opposition and has received no, no votes. Respectfully ask for an aye vote. Seeing no further questions or debate, clerk will open the roll. All members vote who desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. Clerk will close the roll, tally the votes. I 70, no zero. Senate amendments are concurred in. File item 113, AB 475, clerk will read. Assembly Bill 475 by Assembly Member Butler and others, an act relating to vehicles. Ms. Butler. Good afternoon, Madam and a member, Madam Chair and members. AB 475 updates current code to allow all types of plug-in vehicles to park in designated parking spaces designed for electric vehicles. Senate amendments eliminate the requirement that a DMV issued decal be displayed on a vehicle parked in a space designated for charging a zero emission vehicle because the vehicle must be connected 
to the charging station to be considered legally parked in a charging spot. AB 475 is supported by the American Lung Association, the Sacramento Municipal Utilities District, the California Electric Transportation Coalition, and a diverse, and a diverse transportation coalition because California needs to encourage healthier living and growing our green economy. I respectfully ask for an I vote. Seeing no further questions or debate, clerk will open the roll. <coughs> All members vote who desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. Clerk will close the roll, tally the votes. Ayes 58, noes 9, Senate amendments are concurred in. File item 114, AB 516, clerk will read. Assembly Bill 516 by Assembly Member V. Manuel Perez, an act related to transportation. Mr. V. Manuel Perez. Uh, Madam Speaker and members, AB 516 is coming back on concurrence. Uh, Senate amendments deleted a provision allowing school districts to be eligible parties to apply for safe routes to school state grants. Last month, this House approved this bill on a bipartisan vote. AB 516 will ensure equitable access to safe routes to school funds. Access to these funds will improve the health and safety of California's children. I respectfully ask for your vote. Seeing no further questions or debate, clerk will open the roll. All members vote who desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. Clerk will close the roll, tally the votes. Ayes 46, noes 20. Senate amendments are concurred in. File item 115, AB 654. Clerk will read. Assembly Bill 654 by Assembly Member Hueso and Act related to local government. Mr. Hueso. Thank you, Madam Speaker. AB 654 makes several adjustments to the Mills Act, clarifying who can inspect the contracted properties, changing requirements, and enforcement of historical property preservation contracts. These laws have not been reviewed since 1984, and we had an opportunity to clean up a lot of the language. Uh, these updates streamli streamline the current law, keeping homeowners in compliance with their contracts while maintaining the original tent intent of Mills Act, the pre preservation of historic properties. Amendments taken in the Senate restore local officials' discretion to charge Mills Act fees up to the constitutional limit, allowing locals to decide what price is right for their communities. The California Preservation Foundation and the League of California Cities supports this bill, and there is no registered opposition to this bill. I respectfully ask for your I vote in the Senate concurrence amendments. Thank you. Seeing no further questions or debate, clerk will open the roll. All members vote who desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. Clerk will close the roll, tally the votes. Ayes 47, noes 21, Senate amendments are concurred in. File item 116, AB 708, clerk will read. Assembly Bill 708 by Assembly Member Knight and others, an act relating to crimes. Mr. Knight. Thank you, Madam Speaker and members. Assembly Bill 708 provides that a criminal complaint may be filed within one year of the date a hidden recording device is discovered, not the actual date of the crime. This measure provides district attorneys the tools they need to properly prosecute criminals and protect the privacy of individuals. The amendments that were taken on the Senate floor added the double joining revisions and added Assemblywoman Gaines as a co-author. I ask for your aye vote. Seeing no further questions or debate, clerk will open the roll. All members vote who desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. Clerk will close the roll, tally the votes. I-66, no zero, Senate amendments are concurred in. File items 117 through 119 pass and retain. File item 120 has been dispensed with. File item 121 pass and retain. File item 122, AB 1216, clerk will read. Assembly Bill 1216 by Assemblymember Fuentes, an act relating to land use. Mr. Fuentes. Members, this bill gives affected tenants and cities standing to enforce affordable housing retention statutes. Amendments taken in Senate were technical and uh, uh, suggested by the committee. This bill is supported by CRLA, Western Center on Law and Poverty, in the city of Santa Monica. There is no known opposition. I respectfully ask for an I vote. Seeing no further questions or debate, clerk will open the roll. All members vote who desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. Quick, we'll close the roll, tally the votes. Eyes 44, noes 23. Senate amendments are concurred in. File item 123 has been re referred to committee. File item 124, AB 1384, clerk will read. Assembly Bill 1384 by Assemblymember Bradford and others, an act relating to spongement standards. Mr. Bradford. 
Thank you, Madam Speaker and members. AB 1384 corrects the inconsistency in California's expungement process by simply allowing qualified individuals who have demonstrated their rehabilitation to seek expungement under judicial discretion. Currently, a judge can only um, provide an expungement for those who uh, got probation time, not jail time. Accordingly, this bill provides a second chance for individuals who have may have misstepped following their release, but over time have demonstrated their rehabilitation. Uh, Senate amendments clearly clarify the expungement does not permit a person to own a firearm or to hold public office if, in fact, that person was prohibit prohibited from public office and a firearm under their original conviction. AB 1384 is supported by a broad coalition of individuals such as Los Angeles County District Attorney's Office, California Public Defenders Association, ACLU, ASME, and the California Pro Probation and Parole and Corrections Association. I respectfully ask for the uh, concurrence of Senate amendments. Seeing no further questions or debate, clerk will open the roll. All members vote who desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. Clerk will close the roll, tally the votes. Ayes 45, noes 23, Senate amendments are concurred in. File item 125, AB 1402, clerk will read. Assembly Bill 1402 by the Assembly Committee on Public Safety and Act Relating to Deadly Weapons. Mr. Amiano. Madam Speaker and members, Senate amendments make uh, conforming changes to sections that are also being amended by SB 2, uh, 428, the Public Safety Omnibus Bill. This is a committee bill that has the support from both sides. I respectfully request your concurrence vote. Seeing no further questions or debate, clerk will open the roll. All members vote who desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. Clerk will close the roll, tally the votes. I 68, no zero. Senate amendments are concurred in. File items 126 and 127 pass and retain. File item 128. AB 1152, Clerk will read. Assembly Bill 1152 by Assembly Member Chesbro and others, an act relating to groundwater. Mr. Chesbro. Thank you, Madam Speaker. AB 1152 allows a groundwater monitoring entity, if given approval by the Department of Water Resources, to use alternative monitoring techniques such as aerial photographs and remote sensing data if monitoring wells are impractical. Uh, the main Senate amendments added local agencies that have been voluntarily collecting and reporting groundwater data to the list of entities that may assume responsibility for groundwater monitoring uh, if they adopted a management plan uh, by January 2014. By allowing alternative monitoring options, local agencies, especially rural counties, will be able to meet groundwater monitoring requirements and not risk losing state funding if they do not report groundwatering data as required under existing law. I encourage your I vote. Seeing no further questions or debate, clerk will open the roll. All members vote who desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. Clerk will close the roll, tally the votes. I-69, no zero, Senate amendments are concurred in. And we're gonna go back to file item 92. AB 483, clerk will read. Assembly Bill 483 by Assembly Member Torres and act relating to housing. Ms. Torres. Thank you, Madam Speaker and members. Assembly Bill 483 makes changes to the Department of Housing and Community Development Supportive Housing Program to ensure that funding is targeted at those who are chronically homeless and who need supportive services in order to maintain house. Amendments taken in the Senate address concerns raised by HCD and other stakeholders to conform definitions used in the program and those used in similar federal programs. The bill has no opposition and has received bipartisan support throughout the legislative process. I ask for your support. Seeing no further questions or debate, clerk will open the roll. All members vote who desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. Clerk will close the roll, tally the votes. I-69, no zero, Senate amendments are concurred in. Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker. <laughs> I don't 
don't control there the mics. Go. There we go. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Members, please uh, welcome our former colleague, the 67th Speaker and current member of Congress, Karen Bass. We still have assembly third reading and adjourn in memories. Members, Mr. Calderon. So, uh, Madam uh, Speaker, I request uh, unanimous consent to allow the Rules Committee to meet today during session in the Rules Committee room uh, for the purpose of bill referrals. Without objection. Okay, members, we're trying to see if we're going to rule. Mr. Calderon. Yes, uh, Madam Speaker, the Rules Committee will meet in the Rules Committee meeting room now. Okay, the Rules Committee will meet now, immediately, in the Rules Committee room. In the meantime, we are going to continue with Assembly third reading from the top. File items 135 through 138, pass and retain. File item 139, pass and retain. File item 140 has been dispensed with. File item 141, pass and retain. File item 142, ACR 74. Clerk will read. Assembly concurrent resolution 74 by Assemblymember Alejo and others relative to Filipino Americans. Mr. Alejo. Madam Speaker if I, and members, if I could please have your attention for this serious matter and this, um, asking for your support on this resolution. Filipino Americans have a proud history of hard work and perseverance. California, however, doesn't have a proud history regarding the treatment of Filipino Americans. Filipino Americans have a long and documented history of suffering discrimination, prejudice, and animosity here in California. They have endured past transgressions and wrongs committed against them through the implementation of policies and the passage of laws, including segregation of Filipino Americans through the use of separate public facilities and targeted policies. As a result of these policies and laws, they have faced both de jure and de facto, <laughs> Madam, discrimination, and have been targets of aggression and violence. The history in my assembly district is no different. Discrimination and injustice against Filipino Americans ran rapid, especially during that period 
between 1920 and 1940. Filipino American families were targeted for crime because they were quote unquote, stole jobs from Americans. And these Filipino American farm workers were also cheated out of their wages. And a prime example of this unjust animosity was adoption of a resolution in the North Monterey County Chamber of Commerce that stated, quote unquote, Filipinos were undesirable, possessed unhealthy habits and brought in disease, unquote. The hostility towards this community soon grew to a point where mob violence erupted and riots occurred throughout the state, including the cities of Stockton, Executor, Dinuba, San Francisco, Salinas, San Jose, and in my hometown of Watsonville. One was even led by a local police chief. Angry mobs warmed the dance halls where Filipino men gathered, beating and terrorizing these men due to the belief that they were entertaining Caucasian women. The largest and most infamous riots and the worst example of mob terror occurred in my hometown of Watsonville, which culminated in the killing of a young man of the name Fermin Tavera on January 20th, 1930, and where mobs subsequent to that day of up to 700 people went around attacking hundreds of Filipino workers and their families. Fermin Tavera's body was taken to Manila, to the Philippines, where he became a, a martyr and a symbol of the unjust treatment of Filipino Americans in America. For these past injustices, it's time that we recognize the pain and suffering this community has endured. ACR 74 apologizes to Filipino Americans for violations of civil liberties and constitutional rights. I respectfully ask for your eye vote. And Madam Speaker, I um, also ask that the roll be opened for co-authors as well. Mr. Norby. Madam Speaker, while I appreciate the clarification of the historical record, I personally find it morally presumptuous to apologize for the actions that I did not commit. Uh, there are many actions this legislature has done. There are many le actions that political officials have done throughout our history that have been illegal, repugnant, morally problematic, and just plain wrong. There are actions that this legislature has taken that I don't agree with. But I don't feel it's my place to apologize for the actions that I didn't commit, and to do so would be a moral presumption I, I'm not willing to take on. Ms. Lowenthal. Thank you, Madam Speaker and members. I rise in support of this resolution, and I thank Mr. Alejo for bringing this issue forward, for making it clear what history told us. Long Beach, you may know, has an important Filipino community the contributions of Filipinos in my area and in all of California are innumerable and growing. This community has thrived and succeeded in many ways that make our lives better, despite that history. And this was accomplished despite those shameful laws that enshrined irrational fear in our codes. It makes you wonder how much farther along we could be if there had been no such laws. The truth is the truth, and we have to live with it. But more importantly, we must learn from it and make sure that nothing like this ever happens again. So I thank the author, and I urge your I vote. Mr. Mendoza. I thank you, Madam Speaker. Members, as chair of the Legislative Latino Caucus, I rise in strong support of AB, uh, ACR 74, which, uh, which acknowledges past transgressions in the treatment of Filipino Americans in the, in the history of California. Latinos and Filipinos have shared many struggles together, ranging from farm worker movement that was led by Mexican Americans and Filipino American leaders, uh, Cesar Chavez, Philip Veracruz, and Larry Itlong, to the civil rights struggles of ethnic minorities to attain just basic civil rights. I understand that these laws and governmental actions occurred in a time when discrimination was rampant throughout our society, but that does not make it, that does not make them right. Having to live in a place where you are treated as a second-class citizen and are not respected as a human being can be a detrimental, to, uh, uh, can be a detrimental influence on one's self-worth and personal development. Throughout our actions today and our discussion on this bill, we, we will not only acknowledge the past and shed light on those injustices that are embedded in our history, uh, but also we will also let Filipino Americans know that the, vi the vicious actions of our predecessors towards them will not be forgotten. Uh, 
in solidarity with our Filipino American brothers and sisters and all those who have continued to suffer from any and all other sorts of discrimination, I respectfully ask for your I vote for ACR 74. Thank Ms. you. Yamada. Thank you, Madam Speaker and members. I rise in strong support of ACR 74. As a proud co-author of this measure, I want to particularly thank Mr. Alejo for taking the time to bring this issue forward. Members, you know, whether we were personally responsible for an act of our state or not, uh, it is important for all of us to take stock uh, when mistakes have been made to make apologies and make amends. Uh, I think that uh, forgiveness and uh, making apologies and reparations and amends are really fundamental to the reconstruction in the building blocks of a democratic society. And I think we need only look at uh, Filipino Americans today, uh, two of whom I would just like to mention, uh, Tani Cantil Sakaue, who is now Chief Justice of the California Supreme Court, and Mona Pasquil, who uh, formerly served as Acting Lieutenant Governor of the State of California and is now serving as Appointment Secretary for Governor uh, Jerry Brown. Uh, the achievements of the Filipino American community should be celebrated, embraced, and uh, all of the past uh, wrongdoing should be acknowledged. Thank you, members. I hope you will all support ACR 74. Dr. Pan. Yes, uh, Madam Speaker, members, I too ask for your support for ACR 74. And again, I want to thank uh, Senator Member Leho for bringing up this very important issue. Certainly, the events that happened that he referred to took place before any of us were here on the assembly floor. However, I think that it's our role also as leaders of the state to acknowledge the mistakes of the past and to apologize for them. It is our role to do that so that we learn, acknowledge that we've learned the lessons of the past and that we're moving forward. So again, I urge your support for ACR 74. And again, thank you, Senator Member Alejo, for bringing this issue before us. Thank you. Seeing no further questions or debate, Mr. Cedillo, I mean, Mr. Uh, Alejo, you may close. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I just wanted to thank all my colleagues who spoke in favor of this resolution. And I think it's important that at these moments we, we should take some time to acknowledge this sad chapter in California history and to take the time to make these civil wrongs hopefully into a right. Um, also, that to never forget the old adage that said, those who forget the lessons of the past are bound to repeat them. And it was in this body, on this floor, decades ago, that the California legislature passed anti-miscegenation laws, passed laws that segregated Filipino students from attending uh, public schools. So even though that happened generations ago, we can help today make them right and acknowledge those wrongs and apologize to the Filipino community, and hopefully that we will never repeat them again. I ask for your support of ACR 74, and if the roles could be open for co-authors as well, Madam Speaker. Okay, Mr. Alejo is asking for the first role to be open for co-authors. Clerk will open the roll. Uh, this is for co-authors, members. Co-authors, all members vote who desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. Clerk will close the roll, tally the votes. For the record, there are 58 co-authors. We can take a voice vote on this item. All those in favor say aye. aye. All those opposed say nay. The ayes have it. The measure is adopted. Okay, we're gonna go to Senate third reading. File item 143, pass and retain. File item 144, SB 914, clerk will read. Senate Bill 914 by Senator Leno and actually laying to search warrants. Mr. Knight. Thank you, Madam Speaker and members. SB 914 brings California law relative to portable electronic device privacy into the 21st century by requiring police in a search incident to arrest to obtain a warrant prior to conducting a search of the information contained on the portable electronic device. This bill is needed to restore privacy protections recently undermined by the California Supreme Court decision in People v. Diaz, where the court ruled that the police have unrestricted authority to search the data stored on an arrestee's mobile phone without a warrant without probable cause or even reasonable suspicion. They also, in this decision, said that they couldn't go through a laptop, but they could, uh, a personal smartphone. Unlike the federal constitution, which was the focus of the Diaz case, California constitution contains an explicit guarantee of the right of privacy. 
allowing uninhibited in searches of the data stored within a portable electronic device without probable cause clearly presents very real privacy concerns that have not been properly resolved by the court. Given the nearly limitless amount of personal and business data that can be stored on a portable electronic device, i.e. a smartphone, a police search of that smartphone is more akin to searching one's bedroom or desk at the office. If passed, SB 914 will, will not interfere with the legitimate needs of police. It's a very important part here. A recent amendment to the bill makes it clear that all established exceptions to the warrant requirement will apply, just as in any other search which currently requires a warrant. The police have reasonable and sincere belief that a search is necessary to prevent physical harm to the officer or other persons, the destruction or concealment of evidence, or the escape of a suspect, the exigent circumstances exception would apply. I ask for your I vote. Seeing no further questions or debate, clerk will open the roll. All members vote who desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. Clerk will close the roll, tally the votes. Ayes 55, no 0. Measure passes. File items 145 and 146, pass and retain. File item 147, SB 644 on the amendments. Clerk will read. Senate Bill 644 with amendments by Assemblymember Gordon. Mr. Gordon. Thank you, Madam Speaker and members. I rise to ask for support in the adoption of amendments to SB 644. The amendments provide statutory lien authority to the West Contra Costa Healthcare District. This district operates Doctors Medical Center in San Pablo, serving a disproportionately underprivileged community in the cities of Richmond, El Cerrito, San Pablo, Panol, Hercules, and portions of unincorporated Contra Costa County. The statutory lien authority will help the district complete a financing plan this year. Otherwise, it is in danger of running out of cash and not being able to meet its obligations to employees, vendors, and other creditors. The author understands that if amended today by this House, that the bill will be referred back to policy committee. I respectfully request an aye vote on these amendments. Seeing no further questions or debate, and without objection, we will take a voice vote on these amendments. All those in favor say aye. All those opposed say nay. The ayes have it. The amendments are adopted out to print and back on file. And pursuant to Assembly Rule 77.2, I am re-referring uh, that bill uh, back to committee, file item 147, SB 644 by Hancock. Back to the Rules Committee. Okay, file items 148 through 158, pass and retain. File item 159, SB 182 on the amendments. Clerk will read. Senate Bill 182 with amendments by Assembly Member Amiano. Mr. Amiano. Yes, Madam Speaker and members, the amendments to SB uh, 182 by Senator Corbett are chaptering out amendments to resolve any potential chaptering out conflicts. I respectfully ask for your I vote on the amendments and that the bill be sent to print and put back on file. Thank you. Mr. Hagman. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Um, we repose these amendments. Respectfully ask for a roll call vote. Okay. Mr. Calderon is asking for an I vote. Mr. Hagman is asking for a no vote on these amendments. Clerk will open the roll. All members vote who desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. This is the majority of those present in voting. Clerk will close the roll, tally the votes. Ayes 45, noes 25. The amendments are adopted, out to print, and back on file. File items 160 through 165, pass and retain. File item 166, SCR 18, clerk will read. Senate concurrent resolution 18 by Senator Liu relative to public schools. Mr. Dr. Pan. Thank you, Madam Speaker, uh, members. Uh, back in April, I attended the Joint Assembly Health and Education Committee uh, on, hearing on California's Healthy Students Research Project. And it was clear that the health and well-being of California students have a direct impact on dropout rates, attendance, and their academic performance. Unfortunately, the California Healthy Kids Survey the school climate survey and the parent survey are in jeopardy because of loss of federal funding for the safe and drug-free schools and communities program. You know, without them, schools and communities lack the tools to monitor school safety and climate, student engagement, on academic barriers to learning such as substance abuse, bullying, health issues, and violence. And certainly as a pediatrician, I understand how important these health issues are that impact the education of our students. SCR 18 acknowledges the importance of data that these surveys provide on resiliency, health, school culture, and climate, 
and ask that the state calls on the state to ensure that they remain viable through federal funding, grants, or other sources to ensure that school districts receive the necessary funding to support these surveys. This is critical information to be sure that our students can succeed in school. And SCR 18 is sponsored by several ch child advocacy groups such as Children Now and other groups. So I ask for your aye vote on this bill. Thank you. Seeing no further questions or debate, we can take a voice vote on, these I on this item. All those in favor say aye. aye. All those opposed say nay. The ayes have it. The measure is adopted. Mr. Hagman. Thank you, Madam Speaker. We do have a post recommendation on this. Can I ask for a roll call vote on the matter? On that one? Uh, th these are amendments. These are the concurrent resolution in this particular one. And SCR requires, um, it, we can do it on a voice vote unless you ask for a roll call. Yeah, I'm, I'm requesting a roll call vote. Okay. We have a post recommendation on the Republican analysis. Without objection, we will rescind the voice vote and ask for a roll call vote. Okay, so we're gonna open the roll on this item, on this SCR. File item 166, clerk will open the roll. All members vote who desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. Clerk will close the roll, tally the votes. Eyes 43, nose 25. Measure passes. File item 167 and 168, pass and retain. File item 169, SB 177, Clerk will read. Senate Bill 177 by Senator Strickland and others in Act Relating to Health Facilities. Mr. Williams. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I just want to make sure everybody's paying attention by telling them that I'm presenting a bill by, for, by uh, Senator Strickland. Uh, it's an important district bill. The bill simply raises the bed limit for congregate living health facilities uh, that serve terminally ill patients in Santa Barbara County. It would raise it from 12 beds to 18 beds. Uh, this valuable hospice service uh, is very needed because the waiting list in our county is often between 12 and 18 people. Uh, the Santa Barbara County ha currently has only one licensed facility, which has six beds. Respectfully ask your I vote. Seeing no further questions or debate, clerk will open the roll. All members vote who desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. Clerk will close the roll, tally the votes. I 69, no zero, measure passes. File items 170 and 171, pass and retain. File item 172. Pass temporarily. File item 173 through 176, pass and retain. File item 177, SB 684 on the amendments. Clerk will read. Senate Bill 684 with amendments by Assembly Member Fuhrer. Mr. Fuhrer. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. These are simply technical and clarifying amendments. I urge support for the Senate amendments. Seeing no further questions or debate, and without objection, we will take a voice vote on these amendments. All those in favor say aye. All those opposed say nay. The ayes have it. The amendments are adopted, out to print, and back on file. File item 178, SB 41. Clerk will read. Senate Bill 41 by Senator Yee, an act relating to public health. Mr. Eng. Thank you, Madam Speaker and members. Senate Bill 41 will help California confront an unnecessarily high rate of HIV and viral hepatitis due to syringe scarcity. Specifically, this bill will allow pharmacies statewide to sell up to 30 clean needles to an adult without a prescription for personal use, expanding on previous legislation in 2005. Access to syringes does not contribute to increased drug use, drug injection, crime rates, or unsafe discard of syringes, but does save lives. The state of California, working for the University of California and the RAND Corporation researchers, studied the implementation of this prior policy in California counties that opted into that pilot project that was authorized six years ago. Their findings were consistent with studies in other states, and that con conclusion is this. Reductions in syringe sharing with no negative outcomes. Their recommendation, take the pilot statewide, reduce costs and procedural barriers, and this bill does just that. Only two other states still require a prescription for hypodermic needles and syringes. This is a good public health measure. It will save the state millions of dollars in health care costs 
and most importantly, prevent the spread of costly bloodborne diseases. Mr. Donnelly. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Members, um, I rise in opposition to this bill because I believe that it will actually endanger the public and not serve uh, the interest of public safety. I think this is, I understand the intention and I believe it's important um, and I believe the author is sincere in his intent to try to increase public safety, but I'm deeply concerned that we are effectively becoming enablers for those who use inter intravenous drugs. And as we all know, if you've had anyone um, in your family or if you've known anyone um, you know, who are among your friends who have fallen prey to this extremely dangerous addiction, um, it knows no master. It, there, there's nothing that's going to stop people from doing this until they get the help they need. And I think we should encourage them to get the help they need, not enable them by making clean needles available so that they feel comfortable engaging in an addiction that will ultimately lead in their deaths and possibly the deaths of others. I urge a no vote. Dr. Halderman. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I rise in opposition to this measure. Based on the issue of local control, each municipality currently has the ability to make this type of program available. And the problem that I have with the statistics that now look at rates of HIV and hepatitis when needle exchange programs are implemented is that they don't take into account local differences, such as what happens in a rural methamphetamine corridor? What happens when the majority of illicit drug use in a single community actually is anabolic steroids, such as those used by high school athletes? And because of that, this does not allow enough flexibility for us to truly do what is in the interest of public health, which is to study this and figure out and if it, in fact, makes sense in public health and in the meantime, if different municipalities wish to expand their programs, that should be their own control. I respectfully ask for a no vote. Mr. Norby. I ask for an I vote, Madam Chair. Not everyone who buys a needle in a drug store is a drug addict. Just like not everyone who buys a six pack in a liquor store is an alcoholic. We allow adults to make adult choices. And if these are legal products, we allow business owners to sell them. This is a pro-business measure. And the only business groups that have taken a position on this measure are for it, including the California Retailers Association, the California Association of Pharmacists, they favor the bill. This is not about needle exchange. This is about the selling of a legal product to legal adults. It's a pro-freedom measure. And I would ask us to join other pro-freedom states, such as Texas, that have no limits, such as the one this is repealing, to vote for it. Mr. Mansour. Thank you, Madam Speaker. A rise in opposition to this measure. This uh, Senate Bill 41 is bad public policy for California and should be rejected by this legislature. Under the current law, the pharmacists are allowed to sell 10 or fewer hypodermic needles or syringes at any one time. But this bill increases the limit and allows for 30 or fewer needles or syringes to be handed out at any one time. It doesn't make uh, a definition of, uh, of the time period that 30 needles may be distributed. Um, it could be 30 by the hour, the day, the week, or the month, and uh, I, can't, I can't support this. If we're truly interested in helping people, let's get them the help they need. Let's not enable them. This is bad public policy. I urge you no vote. Thank you. Seeing no further questions or debate, Mr. Eng, you may close. Thank you, Madam Speaker, and thank you, members, for that um, very, very important dialogue. Members, this bill is important to families. Families like mine. I just lost my sister to hepatitis. And when policies of the state of California come up that will address this horrible epidemic, I think it's something that we can get behind, point number one. Point number two, members, it's not typical that we have legislation that's been tested by a pilot project. In 2005, we had a bill, SB 1159, which authorized counties to opt in to just such a pilot project which would test to see whether or not there was increased drug use, increased rates of crime, 
or abuse that would be to the detriment of law enforcement. And members, what those results of those counties and cities that opted into the project, and some did not, was that there were no instances of abuse that would inform us that this local policy should not go statewide. Members, this is a bill that's supported by health advocates, retailers, and nurses. It's a reasonable approach to an unreasonable spread of disease. Diseases that are known to be fatal and costly. The critical elements of SB 41 have already gone into effect. California should become the 48th state to enact this or similar legislation. If it does, there will only be two out of 50 that have not enacted this good common sense bill. I respectfully request for an aye vote. Clerk will open the roll. All members vote who desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. Clerk will close the roll, tally the votes. Ayes 50, noes 26. Measure passes. Fall item 179, SB 201 on the amendments. Clerk will read. Senate Bill 201 with amendments by Assemblymember Shajian. Mr. Asajian. Thank you, Madam Speaker and members. I rise today to present amendments to Senate Bill 201 by Senator Desanier. The floor amendments are technical changes from the Attorney General and Secretaries of State's Office, as well as chaptering our amendments. I, re I request that these amendments be adopted and the bill be sent out to print and placed back on file. Thank you. Seeing no further questions or debate and without objection, we will take a voice vote on these amendments. All those in favor say aye. aye. All those opposed say nay. The ayes have it. The amendments are adopted out to print and back on file. File item 173 through 176, pass and retain. Oops, sorry. I already did that. File items 180 through 183, pass and retain. File item 184, SB 940, clerk will read. Senate Bill 940 by the Senate Committee on Education and Act Related to Education. Mr. Block. Thank you, Madam Speaker. SB 940, authored by the Senate Education Committee, corrects technical errors and oversights in the Education Code and makes non-controversial and conforming changes to various statutes related to higher education. I respectfully, respectfully ask for an aye vote. Seeing no further questions or debate, clerk will open the roll. All members vote who desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. Clerk will close the roll, tally the votes. I 70, no zero. Measure passes. Fall item 185, pass and retain. Fall item 186, SB 608. Clerk will read. Senate Bill 608 by Senator DeSonia and others, an act relating the Prison Industry Authority. Ms. Skinner. Thank you, uh, Madam Speaker. Members, um, SB 608 by Senator DeSonia will allow nonprofit organizations who serve public school students to purchase goods and services from the Prison Industry Authority. Um, this will allow nonprofits who work with our school groups to uh, have access to um, materials at a lower cost, which would allow them to increase the quality, breadth, and scope of the services they provide. Um, the additional workflow to our prison industry authority will also um, increase uh, possibilities for work opportunities for our prisoners. Um, and the bill is supported by the K-12 through College, the Prison Industry Authority, CCPOA, and Crime Victims Alliance, and I respectfully ask for your aye vote. Seeing no further questions or debate, clerk will open the roll. All members vote who desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. Clerk will close the roll, tally the votes. I 68, no zero. Measure passes. File item 187, pass and retain. File item 188, SB 428. Clerk will read. Senate Bill 428 by Senator Strickland, an act relating to public safety. Mr. Ramiano. Yes, Madam Speaker and members, SB 428 is the annual public safety omnibus bill that makes various technical and minor changes to criminal justice related code sections. This bill is a consensus bill and uh, any provision that garners opposition has been removed. I respectfully request an aye vote. 
Seeing no further questions or debate, clerk will open the roll. All members vote who desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. Yeah. Clerk will close the roll, tally the votes. I-73, no zero, measure passes. Fall item 189, SCR 45, clerk will read. Senate concurrent resolution 45 by Senator Corbett relative to alcoholic beverage control. Mr. Hall. Uh, Madam Speaker, members, uh, SCR 45 by Senate Majority Leader Corbett urges uh, the state to work with law enforcement, education, and public health leaders, engage parents, school, communities, and youth to prevent uh, and reduce under drinking, uh, underage drinking. This measure has received unanimous support in the Senate and the Assembly. There is no opposition to this measure. I respectfully ask for your aye vote. Mr. Norby. I would support this, Madam Chair, with the caveat that this not close our minds to any continued discussion as to what that drinking age should be. Seeing no further questions or debate, Mr. Hall, you may close. I respectfully ask for your aye vote. Okay, clerk will open the roll. Thank you. All members vote who desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. Clerk will close the roll, tally the votes. I-72, no zero. Measure passes. File item 190, pass and retain. File item 191, SB 146. Clerk will read. Senate Bill 146 by Senator Wyland, an act relating to healing arts. Mr. Berryhill. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Members, SB 146 is simply cleanup legislation to a bill passed in 09 that created a new profession of licensed professional clinical counselors. That's a mouthful. To update and reflect the new law, this bill simply adds licensed professional clinical counselors to various code sections. The only code sections being amended are those of which already cover licensed marriage and family therapists a long-standing comparable profession in California. This bill has received bipartisan support throughout the process. With that, I re uh, respectfully request an aye vote. Seeing no further questions or debate, clerk will open the roll. All members vote who desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. All members vote. Clerk will close the roll, tally the votes. I-61, no seven. Measure passes. File items 192 through 194, pass and retain. File item 195, SB 595, clerk will read. Senate Bill 595 by Senator Woke, an act relating to tight lands and submerged lands. Mr. Chesbro. Thank you, Madam Speaker and members. SB 595 enables the State Lands Commission to take administrative action to remove vessels illegally stored on state lands and vessels that pose an immediate threat to navigation and to the environment. It's estimated that thousands of such vessels exist in the Delta and throughout the state with many leaking pollutants into the water. This bill affords the Commission a practical and less costly process while respecting the property rights of boat owners. The bill has received bipartisan support and is supported by the counties of San Luis Obispo, Contra Costa, and the Santa Clara Valley Water District. I respectfully ask for your aye vote. Seeing no further questions or debate, clerk will open the roll. All members vote who desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. Clerk will close the roll, tally the votes. I-72, no zero, measure passes. File item 196, pass and retain. File item 197, SB 339, clerk will read. Senate Bill 339 by Senator Wolk and others an act relating to alcoholic beverages. Mr. Chesbro. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. This is a bill I hope Mr. Norby will like, although I want to assure you that it's not about the students being able to have access to alcohol. SB 339 allows cooking schools to apply for a license to serve beer and wine for the purpose of teaching beer and wine pairings to students over the age of 21. It will expand cooking schools' course offerings as well as enriching students' learning experiences. The bill also allows city-owned community centers co-located on public school grounds to serve alcohol at non-school events, provided the event is not during school hours. The City of West Sacramento, the Family Winemakers, and the Davis Food Co-op are the sponsors uh, and supporters of this bill. There is no known opposition. I respectfully ask for your aye vote. Seeing no further questions or debate, clerk will open the roll. All members vote who desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. 
clerk will close the roll, tally the votes. I-73, no, zero, measure passes. File items 198 through 201, pass and retain. And we are gonna go back to one file item that we passed temporarily, file 172. File item 172, SB 565 on the amendments. Clerk will read. Senate Bill 565 with amendments by Assembly Member Bonnie Lowenthal. Ms. Lowenthal. Thank you, Madam Speaker. These amendments extend by three years the current provision of law, making it easier for transit districts to qualify for operating assistance under the state transit assistance program. In these tough economic times, when transit districts face severe service cutbacks and financial challenges, these amendments will provide some limited relief. I respectfully request an I vote on the amendments. Mr. Hagman. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, we oppose these amendments. Respectfully ask for a roll call vote. Okay, Mr. Hagman is opposing the amendments. He asked for a no vote. Mr. Calderon asked for an I vote on these amendments. Clerk will read. Clerk will open the roll. All members vote who desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. These are on the amendments. Mr. Calderon asked for an I vote. Mr. Hagman asked for a no vote. Clerk will close the roll, tally the votes. Eyes 48, noes 23. The amendments are adopted, out to print, and back on file. Okay, does any member have a bill they wish to take up that we did not call? Okay, otherwise we are going to go to the consent calendar. There's, there's no consent calendar. Okay, adjourn in memories. The following members were granted to speak on a journal of memories today, Mr. Hill, Mr. Perea, Ms. Skinner, Ms. Torres, and Mr. Williams. Who would like to go first? Ms. Skinner. Thank you, um, Madam Speaker and members. Please join me in adjourning in the memory of Louise Harvey Clark. Louise was a resident of Lafayette in the East Bay of San Francisco for over four decades. She is well known to the East Bay community and has been a community activist and an advocate for peace and justice for, for the entire time she lived in Lafayette. Um, if you have driven on Highway 24 through the Lafayette Arinda area, you may have noticed hillside crosses that overlook that highway. Each one of these crosses memorializes a U.S. soldier killed in Iraq. It is Louise's property that these crosses um, ex are exhibited. Louise has, in addition to her work in peace and justice, Louise was the founder of the first nursery school in Lafayette. She and a group of mothers met over 50 years ago to discuss the formation of a cooperative nursery school, which they then began. She was also a co-founder of the Lafayette Senior Services Programs and served as president of the Lafayette Senior Recreation Center. Among her many accolades, Louise was the recipient of the Peace Award from the Mount Diablo Peace and Justice Center in 2008. In 2009, I had the pleasure to honor Louise on the floor as the 14th Assembly District's Woman of the Year. I and everyone in the East Bay community will miss Louise profoundly we send our condolences to Louise's family and her many, many friends. Mr. Perea. Madam Speaker and members, I respectfully request we adjourn today's session in memory of Joseph Fisher, a 100-year-old military veteran and Sanger resident and one of my constituents. Joseph Fisher, Fisher was a member of the Sanger Fraternal Order of Eagles for, the, for over 65 years. As a fixture of the Sanger Eagles era, he often entertained fellow Eagles by playing the washboard and organ. He was known for being amazing, amazingly sharp-minded even at 100, and for enjoying bingo and shooting pool. Joseph Fisher passed away last Thursday after succumbing to injuries he suffered from an assault inside his apartment at, Fresno County, at the Fresno County Senior Living Center. Joseph Fisher survived by his only son, Joel Fischel Jr., and three sisters. He was a very kind and spirited man whose contributions to this community will always be missed. Thank you, colleagues. Mr. Hill. 
Thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, I rise on behalf of uh, Speaker Pro Tem Ma and Assemblymember Gordon in uh, requesting adjournment in memory of Mary Tissier, who is the mother of San Mateo County Supervisor Adrian Tissier. Mary passed away on August 4th at the age of 90 after a brief illness surrounded by the love of family and friends. Uh, the Tissier family moved to Daly City in 1953 after graduating from Mission High School. She married Bert Tissier and raised three children, Jerry, Brad, and Adrian, in Daly City's Westlake neighborhood. Her friends called her Mary Sunshine, and there was a good reason for that because she was always full of sunshine and represented herself and a lot of friends and the clubs and the groups that she uh, worked with and uh, was part of. She, she leaves behind sons Jerry, Brad, and daughter Adrian and grandchildren Deborah, Todd, Troy, Michael, and Carrie. And the Tissier family uh, expresses their gratitude for all of their friends who uh, supported them. I ask in, that you adjourn in their memory. Mr. Williams. I'd ask that uh, you adjourn today in the memory of Linda Perry Williams. She's a native of Santa Barbara and died, away, died peacefully July 15th, 2011, after courageously fighting multiple system atrophy for the past eight years. Linda was the office manager for Perry and Alvarado CPAs for over 30 years. She served as a treasurer for numerous political campaigns, including my own, and was well known in her expertise uh, for political finance, but she also worked tirelessly for charities. Uh, she was a tireless supporter of our local homeless shelter and 4-H, and she worked for these causes even during the eight years of struggling with the disease that finally took her life. She worked hard on my campaign, but also for these charities during her last days of ability to do so. And she was a friend. And she'll always be remembered for her outgoing, friendly, caring personality and her love for the people and her family. She's survived by her husband, Alan Williams, and her brother, Dave Perry. I ask you to adjourn in her memory. Okay, thank you, members. Please bring the names of the desks to be printed in the journal. Uh, there are two committees today, natural resources, starting at 215 in room 447, and the Veterans Affairs Committee also starting at 2.15 in room 444. The session schedule is as follows. Tuesday, August 23rd, check-in session. Wednesday, August 24th, check-in session. Thursday, August 25th, session at 9 a.m. All other items remaining will be passed and retained. All motions shall be continued. I'm ready to entertain a motion to adjourn. Mr. Allen moves. And Mr. Silva seconds that this House stands adjourned until Thursday, August 25th at 9 a.m. Quorum call is lifted. Silva, Assembly District 67, file item 190, uh, 195, SB 595, yes to not voting. Silva, Senate Bill 595, aye to not voting. Garrick, file item 195, SB 595, from aye to not voting. Garrick, Senate Bill 595, aye to not voting. Harkey. File item 106, AB 75, no to I. Harkey, Assembly Bill 75, no to I.